and glory, honour and praise and we thank him. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you for this evening. I thank you for what's going on. With your word, Lord God, with your grace. Oh, excuse me. Praise God. Praise the Lord. We give God the glory, God the honour and God the praise. <coughs> we give him the glory, the honour and the praise. We give him the glory, the honour and the praise. We give Jesus to all the glory, all the honour and all the praise. And his name will be exalted. I personally had a really good day today. Speaking to the staff, evening to everybody that's coming up. Well, good day. I need an haircut. God help me with this haircut. It's no good. I need an haircut. Oh, praise the Lord. I'll move that over there because it's getting in my head. And I'll just cut it down there and I'll leave it there like that. Praise God. Uh, I thank Jesus for what he's doing. Thanks this afternoon. I'm again. I'll, I'll mention this when some of the people, the people got really sorry about this afternoon. But people come on. I've left it. We've left it on to um, Facebook. It's a bit of a laugh. And as Christians, people think we can't have fun. We can't have a laugh. I personally can. Um, so I'll give God the glory, the honor, and praise. They, they all this. It, it, it Facebook thing, it's although that's it's snowballing. Um, I can't even keep up with the people that want to join us and, and things like that. It's it's what I'm hoping for. I've been speaking to a couple of people today, and especially the staff. And what a, a privilege it is just to even do that. And somebody spoke to me earlier on, very early on this afternoon, about the truth. And it's, it is, it's the truth that sets us free. It's the truth that sets us free. And most people on here that know me know that I really love to preach the truth of what Jesus said. And tonight's going to be no exception. Um, I'm not out to bring any other ministry or anybody down I won't be speaking about other people or what they do or what you know I'm not into all of that I'm into what God wants me to do and first off and foremost that's what it's about um, I know that Sean will be coming on in about five minutes ten minutes we've got another guest uh, Tom Um Skesky, he'll be coming on Thursday evening, give us a testimony. I'm looking forward to hearing that as well. <clears throat> Speaking to Tom today, um, he loves the Lord. And I love people that love the Lord. And when people come on, one of the first things to do is, I, I, I generally always say, please mention Jesus a lot. Because this is all about Jesus. It's not about you and I. You and I are what I call, or what the, what the word's called, you and I are the oracle of God. We're the word of God, where God uses you and I to preach his word. That's what this is about. It's about you and I preaching about how people can come into a relationship with Jesus. <coughs> and if God wants to heal people along the way because the word says these signs will follow those. Yeah? So, first and foremost, I'm about seeing people healed in the spirit of faith, getting them a relationship with Christ that they can talk to Christ themselves first and foremost. You and I don't have to go through other people 
to go to God. I explained this last night, but we, we can go to God ourselves if we're in right standing with God. Now, what do I mean by right standing with God? I mean, first off, if we know him as Lord and Saviour, we accept what he done on the cross, that he died for us and he rose again on the third day. He was born of a virgin birth. He is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. That is our belief. That's my belief. And that's what I'm on here for, to preach the word of God. Yes, we have a ministry. And this is how I look at the ministry. The ministry has been loaned. It's on loan to us till we go to be with Christ. So we have a ministry and we have a church building that the body comes to meet in. All this belongs to God. Now, <coughs> excuse me, we are assistant ministers to God. I'm not into big titles. I'm a humble servant of Jesus Christ. Whether you want to call me a sweeper up, whether you want to call me a cup of tea maker, a greeter on the door, whatever you wish to call me, that's what it will be a privilege to be. We are here to serve the living God. He is alive. He's not dead. He's not a baby. He's a grown gentleman. And that's what we're going to, we're going to go into the word soon. And I want to share, um, I'm going to go to John chapter 14, verse 12. John chapter 14, verse 12. A lot of people take scripture out of context. Because the word says this, He's meaning it. we can pray for absolutely anything and God will give us anything that we want. And that's not true. <clears throat> absolutely not true. <coughs> so, I'm going to pray. Father, I ask in the name of Jesus. I pray that your word goes out and ministers to everybody upon this service tonight, Lord God. Father, I ask that you bring revelation. Holy Spirit, that you come in the power of the word of God through Jesus Christ and you minister to these people. Father, all I can do is speak your word. Father, but the rest of it is down to you. You do the convicting. You do the teaching. You do all of it, Lord God. So I ask in the name of Jesus, Father, that you be glorified this evening in Jesus' name. I'm going to be speaking about a couple of other things, but at the end of the service, it's lovely to see a lot of people that I've never met before. I really do hope and pray that you enjoy the Word of God. We are not a, a, a church, a part of the body that we're here to preach where you can be tickled by God. There's only one way I know for you and I to have a relationship with God, and that is to be in obedience to him. And this is what this is about for me. Yeah, I can honestly say to you, I have been blessed by God for a long, long, long time. God meets my need. Let me say that again. God meets my need, not my needs. If I pray to God for God to give me finances to do something, whether it be for the church, for the centre or for the general body of Christ, the first thing God really convicts me about, and he says, what have you got in your pocket? What have you got in your bank? And I have to sit there and meditate and you know, say, you know what, Lord? 
I've got enough in my bank account for this situation. Now, when I use what God has given me already and I come down to nothing, then I go to God and I say, Lord, I have a need to see your name glorified. Lord, we need to feed this amount of people. Lord, we need to feed, help these children in Africa that we help. We help five in Zimbabwe and we help five in Nigeria that we send children to school. That's where our faith level is on that. We're trying to build a school in Zimbabwe. The government have given us some land. We're waiting for people to get involved in it that we can help other people. So that's part of our vision. In England, we have a rehabilitation centre where we help those that are to come off drugs, to come off alcohol. We have a centre that does that. <coughs> We have a, a church as well, a church building uh, that we meet on a Sunday morning, Sunday evening, uh, Wednesday evening and Friday evening. That's what we, we've been really blessed with. So I thank the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not into um, praying to be a multi-millionaire. I don't need an aeroplane. I really don't need an aeroplane. I don't need five houses. I don't even need two houses. I don't need two cars. I've got one car, and you know, it's a good car, and it gets me around. It's not a new one. It's eight years old. It gets me around. I was blessed with that. So I'm one of these pastors that believe As long as I've got enough to eat, go to ministry, preach on a Sunday, go to the centre, be around my family, pay my bills, I'm more than happy. I am so content in what God provides for me. I've never gone hungry. Never, ever gone hungry. One or two occasions we've needed something and we've asked God for it and he has gave us it to us. So, and I'm telling you this because, and explaining this because, I'm not after your money. In fact, you have got nothing that will make me happy. Except for one thing, that you, if you do not know Christ, that you come to know him as your Lord and Saviour. And that one day, I will meet you in paradise. So please, we're not after your money. We're not after selling books. <laughs> we'll let God do all that. If God wants to bless us, God will bless us. <clears throat> and if you're if you're going to church and your pastor tells you you he needs a new car or a new airplane or a new house don't go along with it I personally don't believe God wants me to be a millionaire and leave it to my family if I if we got money through this ministry, it stays in the ministry. I cannot use it for anything that I feel like I want. I cannot go and buy a new car when I want and do what we can't do that. So I just want you to know where I'm actually coming from. First, priorities for us as a ministry is salvation in Jesus Christ is getting you and I to a place that we can surrender our lives to Christ. Then when we're right with God, and then we, we're going to go to the scripture soon, and we sit before Christ, he will answer our prayers. Now, how does God answer your prayers and my prayers? And it's usually not in a way that you and I want him to. 
I've sat there many times and I've thought, Lord, we need finances. It's never fell out the ceiling. It's never come from the sky. It's always come from the body of Christ. So, <clears throat> with no further ado, that's what a guy called Rick Joyner, he said this, and I remember what he said, when he picked up his Bible and he said, let's go to the danger zone. Now, for some of us, it is the danger zone. Because God is asking us to do things that we don't normally do. We'll go into that. I'm excited about that one. I've got a big smile and the people that I know know what I'm talking about. Uh, verse 12. Chap John chapter 14, verse 12. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. And whoever you ask, whatever, whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son, or through the Son, Jesus. <coughs> Excuse me. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. What does it mean? Does it mean, well, I want to win the lottery or I want to have big houses and big this and big that? No, it doesn't mean that. It doesn't. It means exactly what Jesus has just said. If you and I ask in Jesus' name and we go, that goes before the Father, we're asking that the Father gets glorified through the name of Jesus Christ and what you and I are actually asking for. So I ask the Father tonight, in Jesus' name, Father, that you bring glory to yourself through your Son, Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit, that people come to salvation and that your glory is exalted in all creation. That's the kind of prayer that God truly wants to answer. He doesn't want me to say, God, I need another car. Why did Jesus come? When, what, what, what prayers do you know in Scripture where Jesus ever asked God for something personally? The prayers that I ask, see Jesus and I read Jesus asking for. God, would you bless this food that it glorifies your name, that it feeds these thousands. That's the kind of prayers I hear Jesus speaking. When the disciples said, Jesus teaches us to pray, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come. They're the kind of prayers that God the Father listens to through Jesus. As God passed his authority down to Jesus, for Jesus to use up on this earth, that's another sermon because Jesus was here as a man, not as God. Luke 10, 19. Let's turn to Luke 10, 19. This is an important one. I wasn't going to this, but I like this one. <clears throat> praise Jesus, give him the glory, the honour and the praise. Behold, I give you all, give you the authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and, over, and have over power over all the enemy and nothing by any means shall, shall hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice that your name is written in heaven. <clears throat> God has loaned you and I the authority to do the works that Jesus did. <clears throat> and it's up to you and I to do it exactly how God has given us a mandate to do it. 
It's not about the signs and the wonders. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me say where my heart's coming from on this. And I'm saying this because I've personally seen God raise people up from, the, from wheelchairs. So I'm saying this because I've seen it. But I'm saying that God would rather people come into the kingdom of God through his son Jesus Christ. It's not about how many people we can raise. How big the church can be. How much tithes and offerings we get in. Instead of building a bigger church, I'm talking about a church building. Take that money and go feed the poor. Take that money and buy some housing that the homeless can go and live in. Is this, is this resonating? I'm sorry, but that's the way I personally feel. I've got what I need. And I'm content in Jesus to have what I need. You don't need that aeroplane now. God's shown you a different way. This is my aeroplane. I'm going round the world preaching the word of God. And I don't even have to get out of my seat. It does not cost me anything financially. Except pay me the bill for the internet. I've got a first class seat. I'm talking to brothers and sisters and people that don't know Christ around the world. I have a captive audience. People can come on or go off or whatever, do whatever they feel they need to do. But I am here for Christ alone. Now, <clears throat> when Jesus says, let me read it again. Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. My Bible purposely says, says, signs and wonders will follow the word. Let me put it this way. Signs and wonder, wonders will follow Jesus Christ. When you and I are preaching the word of God, their God is by Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit in the midst of what we're preaching. God has only called those preachers or all, whoever's preachers and pastors and ministers and whatever, he's called us to be the oracle the word of God, preach it and allow the Holy Spirit to do whatever he wants to do. If he wishes to heal people, he will heal them. If he wishes to bring and allow these people to come to salvation, he will do. But please allow it to be Jesus that does it. Don't you and I force our way to the front. He's always got to be exalted and pushed to the front. This is his word, not mine. I'm just so privileged to be able to preach it and speak it and read it. And it's the truth that sets you and I free. <coughs> right, so let's go to a bit. I may not possibly get past some of this. We've got somebody coming on, um, and I forgot about him. God forgive me. But we will have him on in a few minutes, and then um, I want to show you, and I want to give you, would you like to see a miracle tonight at this service? Yeah. Here's a challenge. Would you like to see a living miracle 
Well, in a few minutes, I'm going to show you. We've got a, a chap coming on called Sean. And he's going to give you testimony of what Jesus has done in his life. Not what I've done. Not what our staff have done. But what Jesus has done in his life. And on Thursday, we've got another chap, Tom, coming on. And he's going to share with you what Jesus has done in his life. And that's through the power of prayer that we have prayed for other people. And why we get this happening in the ministry that we've got is because we push Jesus to the front and we stand back and allow the Holy Spirit to do whatever he wants to do. If people get healed, if people um, get blessings of God, I thank God for it. You do not have to tell me. I would prefer you not to tell me, just in case I start to take something away from God and it becomes me who's doing it. It's got to be Jesus that does it. Yeah. So I'll wait for this young man to um, come on and uh, give testimony. <coughs> of what Christ has done in his life and once he's on then we will do whatever we need to do as soon as he comes up if he comes up if he wants to come up um, we, yeah they'll have to stay I'm sorry about the testimony, um, video this morning um, he's coming on now so we're going to take him and hopefully we can add him yeah. No, I've got yeah. me twice. Why is me twice? Oh, not you. Oh, there you are, mate. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me see if I can <laughs> get you on twice. Uh, hang on. Right. They can't see me, but they can see you, yeah? Take your hat off, Sean. <laughs> right, Sean. The people oh, can see you. Right. Um, what I'd like you to do is share with these people, and they're from all over the world, what Jesus has done for you and what kind of backgrounds you come from. Keep contented to about five, ten minutes and tell them what Jesus, how Jesus healed you. That's you, Sean. All right, thank you very much, Pastor. Yeah, Jesus saved my life. That's what he's done. He's uh, changed my life dramatically. I come from I come from a quite a well back well to do background, me. Uh, but a good family. Good family values, but uh, drinking just told me and I just ruined everything. And I, I, well, it starts off at a very early age. Uh, I worked with my dad, I lived, but I worked with him as well. So for eight years, I worked with my dad. Uh, but as my drinking got better, worse and worse with him, uh, I, I just put all ties, you know, from all the family. And I got met a girl, got uh, had a baby with her. But my drinking was just getting worse and worse. So I just drink, as, as the drink gets worse, you just. You're ruining more and more and more and more. You're, you're ruining, you know, you, you can't settle down to anything because all you're thinking about is drinking all the time. Uh, but now, like, how can I explain it? You, I've tried to do this on my own. Now, and, and now I know with Jesus in my life, I can do it with Jesus, not on my own. I can't do this. I've tried to do it on my own and there's no way I can do it on my own. It's not working. I've, I've been here now twice. So, and I thought I've fixed. I was fixed after eight months. Oh, that's me. I've done. But no chance. He brought me back. If you if you've called, if you're called, he's like he's, he's come back. You know, I'm not finished with you yet. You know, I've got more things for you to do. You know what I mean, so I'm just really, really glad that that for what God's done for you, for especially for the forgiveness that you is give to you to give to me to let me come, to come back here. You know, do what to finish off what I, what he started with me. You know what I mean, Pastor? I'm loving it. Well. Tell them um, how this has affected your family. Uh, it, it devastated because I'm the I'm the oldest of nine, of nine. Uh, so I'm the first of what my mum. She could see no wrong in me, you know. But my dad, uh, I've been to every single family member. I've got pretty well a family and and tried manipulating them, do this, and they've all just gone to it, and eventually. But my mum would always 
my dad just what banned me from the house. Didn't want me near the house. But my mum would still phone me up and say, right, he's gone to bed, come round. But even she, at the end of it, was just saying, well, you're going to have to get yourself sorted now, Sean. You know, there's no nothing we can do anymore. There's nothing for you here unless you get, you know, you get yourself sorted. And it was devastating to see my own mother crying in an ambulance with me saying, that's it, Sean. You know, you're going to have to get something now or that's it, you're going to die. And, you know, we've already, I've already lost a brother. And she said, I don't want to, I don't, you don't want to bury another one. And that's the most heartbreaking thing I've ever had in my life when she said, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to bury another son. Yeah. So, and she, now, now, what's happening now is my father's falling up. My daughter, my granddaughter, it's just absolutely, the, the amazing, I can't believe it, you know, especially with my dad. I thought I lost it with my dad. I thought that had gone. But now he's falling up all the time. And asking how I'm doing and joking with Lisa and having a joke with George James, you know, it's just, it's coming back, but it's small steps past the. How did you first get here? I got here, I was in a, I was in a hospital in Preston and I was just talking to a, a woman who was, why was wasn't you in work. And why was Thank you in you. hospital? Pardon? Why was you in hospital? Because I, I drunk myself to death nearly. I drunk myself up into just into where I was gonna. They put me on a coma and everything again. But uh, the woman, she was an Austrian police officer, helping out at the hospital, and uh, Lisa knows her. And I didn't know. I was talking to her about I'm trying to get into rehabs, and and she went, I can get you in a rehab. And she made the phone call to Lisa and said, Right, you can go now. And that just absolutely shocked me. You know. So I went to uh, the place where I was going for get, getting help, and they said, "Well, we're going to buy a ticket." So in my, my, my the mind I was in then, I was trying everything. Right, I'll just go home, get one more drink, and he said, "No, I bought your ticket. You're going right now." And that was it. I was on that train, and that it changed my life. It's got me here, and that's my life has changed. It's going to and hopefully. Let me just say something, Pastor. What you say, my past, my past will not dictate my future. My future will dictate my past. Amen. Now my past, my past is the old friends, the drinking traits, the swearing, all that. That's the past I don't want to bring to my future. But the future is now what I'm going to do, what I'm doing, getting better, uh, getting a mind of walking like Jesus and doing things, getting just getting stronger. I want to take that to my past, but only the past, what I want. I can't, you know, my daughter, my family, that's the future I want to take to that. So, you know what I mean? You can't just forget your past, black. Like, some of your past you need to take with you, you know, yes. bring, bring back to you. Amen. You know what I mean, Pastor? You know, you know what I mean? It's so, like another one for you, Pastor. Go on. Another one. Uh, this is going to look like this one. The old fragrance was swearing and horrible words, and that's the that's that's the fragrance you don't want. The fragrance now is coming out is Jesus, all so the words of Jesus, right? That's what you want to give out, isn't it? So guess what somebody's getting for good for this year? It's going to be very cheap. It's not you. Prada, your Armani, your Jimmy Choo. It's Jesus 777. It's free. It's a fragrance just for you, Pastor. Amen. Amen. So what's the relationship with your family like now? Absolutely terrific. It's absolutely amazing, Pastor. Uh, my dad's on the phone all the time. My mother's sending me letters. My sister comes up. You've seen my sister, haven't you, Pastor? Yeah. And uh, my sister comes up. You know, my brothers are all getting back towards me now. But it's my daughter, you know, I thought I'd let you all, I, well, she didn't want nothing to do, but I phoned her up now with the granddaughter, and the granddaughter's so happy, she just can't wait to come up and see me, you know what I mean? So I've no, I've no wanting, I don't want to, at first I, I wanted to go be back in Preston, I thought there's, it, I could be, I could get the back there and do what I want to do, but there's nothing for me there, past except my daughter, but it's one of them where you think you can't survive being back there, but you can. Yeah. So I start again, I start up here or somewhere else so they can come and see me. You know, it, it doesn't mean that I have to be there. That's you know right. I mean? So what would you say to a new person coming in? Just, you've got to be, truthfully, on your knees and you want to want it for yourself. Nobody else. 
everybody else, you, you'll, you'll think that <coughs> you, you've got to do this for yourself, and that's all, the only person who can do this is you. You can't have Molly Coddle or you know, this or that. It's you. You've got to be in mentally, mentally wanting to do this. And okay, that, it just you needs want to, to say, <coughs> answer this. At the moment, <coughs> Sean, um, we've got 13, 14 lads in. <coughs> and um, <coughs> because of the coronavirus, we've found it, and because of law, we found it difficult to take new people in, even though we've got the beds. Um, yeah. And we know that <coughs> the, all the lads and the staff, we, we won't wish to take people. What would you give them advice to do until we can start taking people? What advice would you well, give them? Yeah. Men? Pray. Just pray and just stop drinking. Just don't drink and drugs is not the way. Just try your best not to do. That is not... That, it's a horrible thing, you know, just to try. Because I've, I've done it, I've been there. And just, you've got to, if you're going to do this, start doing it now. Start stopping the drinking, stopping taking the drugs, you know what I mean? Start putting your mindset on. If you're going to do this, start doing it now. You know, start, just, yeah, it's just start wanting it for yourself. You know what I mean? Just quit everything. Like, all the lads in here now, like, can you imagine, well, there's 13 grown men in here. And, uh, there can be tensions and, and niggles, but you know what? They, every, everything now is just you can you can have a little fall and it's forgiven and forgotten straight away. I mean, every I can name all of you: Stephen, Dean, Ronnie, Brian, Matthew, Alan, uh, Stuart, James, Ruthless, Kevin, Jimmy the Black is from Scarborough, somewhere in Northern Ireland. You know, all the lads in here. You know, I can name them all. All the good stuff, lads. Okay. Well, thanks for coming on, Sean. We really appreciate it. And I, I, I pray that I'll see you soon. Um, I haven't seen you Thank since you, weeks. I've only seen you this way. Um, so let me pray for you and, and, and the lads, and then we'll carry on with the same. Father, I ask in the name of Jesus. I thank you for Sean and what he's just spoken. Father, to me, that's a true miracle. And the rest of the lads sitting upstairs, Lord God, watching this. Father, them lads are true miracles. We've not healed them. You have, Lord God. We never brought these lads in. You did, Lord. It was their choice, their free choice, to want to come in to follow you. So, Father, we thank you for that, and we ask in the name of Jesus that you bless them. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank, thank you, Sean. Boss. It was lovely to see you. Bye -bye, and may God Bye. bless you and fulfil you everything in your life. Now, <clears throat> Sean's been with us a couple of times and he's done a great job. But he mentioned a couple of scriptures there. And um, one of them, he, he, he didn't mention the scripture, but he, he took context from the scripture. And it's in 2 Corinthians 2.15. For we are to God the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved. I want to read that again. For we are to God... The fragrance of Christ to those who are being saved. It carries on. And among those who are perishing, to the one we are the aroma of death leading to death, and to the other we are the aroma of life leading to life. Life, who is sufficient for these things. For we are not as so many peddling the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as from God, we speak in the sight of God in Christ. You and I, as Christians, when we speak the word of God to those people outside, whether they be Christians or non-Christians, whether they're going to heaven or they're going to hell, we are the fragrance of Christ. Our words should be honest, should be righteous, and they should hit the point that Christ has asked you and I to talk to these people about. I'll take you to another scripture. Um, it's Matthew 6.14. <clears throat> and then we'll go back to John, because this is a very important scripture. 
Matthew 6, 14. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive you your trespasses. Then when we go back to John and we come back to answered prayer, these three scriptures for me sum it all up. First off, have we forgiven people that have hurt us? Have we forgiven them? Have we accepted their forgiveness for hurting us? Because when you and I do that, we then become the fragrance of Christ unto God. Then, when you and I pray this prayer, most assuredly I say to you, this is what Jesus is saying, he who believes in me and does either works he will do, also the greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. And whatever I ask, whatever you ask for in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. It's not about riches. It's about God's kingdom. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Listen. And all his righteousness. Everything will be added to us. When we take scripture, we read scripture, we've got to read scripture against other scriptures of what God's saying. Now, for some of us, there are scriptures there that we need to forgive people. If we go into church to worship Christ and we lift our hands, we're lifting holy hands, supposedly. If you and I have got dirty hands, is God going to listen to us? No, we need to be that aroma that Jesus takes as incense up to God, that God, Jesus goes and says, God, Father, these are coming from clean hands, from people that love me, want to get into your presence for you to receive the glory, the honour and the praise. That's what this is about. It's about God being glorified. See, some people say, um, why doesn't God answer my prayers? It's simple. Have you got bitterness? Have you got hatred for your brother or your sister? Have you asked God to forgive you and you feel as you can't be forgiven? Will you forgive people that have hurt you? All this comes into contention when we go into the presence of God. All of it. If you dislike your brother or sister, God can't do anything. His word is plain. You and I have to be right with God first. Oh yes, he loves you unconditionally. We went over this last night. He loves you unconditionally. His grace and mercy is all there all the time. But if you and I hold something against somebody, God says, I have to hold this against you. Because you're not forgiving people that my son Jesus Christ died for. So why should I forgive you, he says. You and him and he are all in the same position. You won't forgive each other, so how can I forgive you? This is the word of God. We take, um, what do we do? We take the word, what happens usually is, I spoke about this a few weeks ago. We take guilt on board. Okay, if I do something wrong, one or two things happen. 
I, the Holy Spirit convicts me or the spirit of guilt comes on me. I have to then ask God for the sermons, God, what's conviction and what's guilt? I personally believe guilt is a sin. And that guilt can hold me back. It ends up going into bitterness, to anger, and all these kind of different things. And it takes us further and further away from God because what we end up saying is, I'm right there wrong. And we don't just keep it there. We go to everybody else and say, this is what they've done to me. And it gets blown up out of all proportion. And then we start to disfellowship with these kind of people. Then we go along and say, God's blessing me. And oh, praise the Lord. Sorry, God's not blessing you. God can't bless sin. And if you and I have got something against each other, it's sin. Not to be in unity with one another. We may disagree with each other. But I can agree to disagree with you. I will not fall out of fellowship with you as I hope you will not fall out of fellowship with me. You will never stop my walk with God no matter what. I will always forgive. Always forgive. Because my walk with Christ is so important. Because I love him so much. And that's what this is truly about. So if you truly want your prayers answered, take time out. Who do you not forgive? Who have you fallen out with you'd like to make it up with? You've got an opportunity to do this. You want to know what humility is? Let's humble ourselves and ask people to forgive us. Even if they're right and it was our fault, ask him to forgive us. That cloak, that mantle of humility will come over us and it will protect us. The enemy wants to swoop in and he wants to destroy your life and my life. And if he can take your life away from Worshipping Christ, being in Christ's presence. And if he can deceive you and I by saying, you're right. And you're wrong. You and I are going to stand before God for that. That's so important. So my prayer for, for each one of us tonight is that we truly take hold of what Jesus done on that cross for you and I. When he was on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. Who are you and I not to do exactly the same? Is forgive them. Welcome to Christianity. Do you want to see prayers answered? Ask God to forgive you. Give you and I an opportunity to ask people to forgive us. Put that mantle of humility on. Grace, mercy, holiness. Then when we go to God, to seek God for whatever our needs are, God is more likely to answer. Because I believe by the power of the Holy Spirit, he hands these prayers to Jesus. Jesus takes them and hands them to the Father. Can you imagine the aroma that God smells when he sees forgiveness? He sees love, he sees grace, he sees mercy. He sees what his son, his death has achieved in your life and my life. I just see the almighty God, the creator of this universe. I just feel he breaks into a tear 
and is so in love with us through his son and he sees the effects of his son's death and resurrection that that's what he set out to achieve is to bring you and I into his presence now I haven't got time to go into the rest of it tonight because I want to just give some notices and what we do on on, on, on these evenings we we take communion and again I don't know what kind of background most of you has come from but Jesus says as often as you come together do this in remembrance of me um, you don't need a priest or a vicar or a pastor to take communion communion you and I are kings priests and pastors we are all kings and priests every one of us to some have been called to the ministry full time some have been called to the ministry part time some have been called to the ministry on a Sunday to do the teas, coffees and cleans ups or Saturday morning. We are all kings and priests and each one of us is going to reign with Christ when he comes back. So don't you let anybody tell you that you can't take communion. If you are in the body of Christ, you can take communion. People that say you can't are not in the body of Christ and they believe that they're the body of Christ and they're the only ones that can do this. That's false doctrine that's coming from the enemy and it's not from God. That's what that is. I've got brothers and sisters on here that can take the communion. So... <coughs> I'll give you a couple of minutes to go and get some communion together. Um, I know that our church that comes on have already done that and I know the people that normally come on have already done that. And then we will take communion. I'll just give you some notices. We have um, on the screen that you're seeing uh, Changing Lives Helpline. Now that is for people um, that are on drugs, alcohol, um, got the depression you can phone that and we have got people at the end of the phone that will speak to you yeah they will sit down they will listen to you um, and they will pray with you they may not be able to physically do anything right at this moment if you know anybody that wishes to um, come into the centre or you know somebody that's in your family that has got an addict or a, um, an alcoholic in the family we know what you're going through we know that what these alcoholics and these drug addicts the, the way they wear what their kind of lifestyle is they'll steal they'll, do, they'll, they'll use force they'll be abusive They'll do steal everything. They'll do anything to get whatever they need to get to get their substances, whether that be drugs or whether that be alcohol. Some people go through an abusive relationship. That's how that's a drug to some people. We've got a helpline there where you can get help. We do know other people that we are can't cannot help you we will tell you we will be really honest but we can put you in touch with other people that have got that are more apt to that kind of situation and um, we will pray with you first and we will pass a number over to you where you can speak to other people our office number is 01429 420045 you can speak to a young girl called Elisa or Alison our website is www.reachoutministries.co.uk. You can go onto our website, have a look around. People have said that they want to donate. You can go on there, our bank account and everything is on there. Please go on. Um, for those that want to give us millions of pounds, please don't ask for my details. 
just go onto the website and put the millions of pounds in. As I said last night, we will get in touch with you and thank you and pray for you and give all the glory to Jesus if you put these in, yeah? So please do that. Don't ask for any details. They will not be given to you. The only details that will be given to you is our website that you can go in and push the donate button and donate to us. We will send you no details, yeah? That is unrighteous what you're doing. And I have had, yeah, I'm not going to go into it. So please be aware, yeah? <coughs> it's wrong what you're doing. Go and get yourself a decent job. Go to work. Feed your families if you've got your families that way. But don't steal off other people. It's wrong before Jesus. And one day you and I are going to be standing before Jesus. Well, we won't be standing. We'll be flattening our faces before Jesus. Every knee shall bow one day to Jesus Christ. So I'm making no apologies for that kind of statement. Um, and this is what I truly feel. Yeah? I don't need an aeroplane. I don't need a mansion. I don't need anything like that. Personally, I'm not a rich man. I got a small salary from church and that's it. The staff are the same. We don't need anything else. If anybody asks you for anything else, tell them no. Just either give a gift or tithe and offer them whatever you want to do. We're all right with we that. We're just absolutely fine, so don't worry about it. We're not after anybody's money, as I said earlier on. I'm after to see you come to Christ, come into the presence of God. Right, so we're going to take communion, praise God. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Got it. There we go. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Therefore, whoever eats this bread and drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgments upon himself, but discerning, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and fall asleep Many die because we do this in the wrong way. And we do a lot of things in the wrong way. If we've got sin in our lives and we're coming to God and we're not asking God to forgive us or we're not asking other people to forgive us, don't let guilt come in. Let it be conviction. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord that we may not be condemned with the world. Therefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. But if anyone is hungry, let him eat at home, lest you come together for judgment, and the rest I will set in order when I come. I'm not going to go into any teaching on that. But I want to take bread and wine. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus. I thank you for your death, for your resurrection. I thank you that when we come together now, Lord God, to take this bread and this wine, it's in remembrance that you're coming back one day and that one day you're going to eat this at that, that I'm supper, Lord God, the marriage supper. You're going to sit there and you're going to eat it. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for your glory, for your death, for your resurrection for what you've done for us. Father God, we thank you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, we thank you for shedding your blood that each one of us may be able to come into your presence if we accept you, Lord. Father, there are many people out there that don't know you Father, I'm asking that you 
touch them by your Holy Spirit, Lord God, that you bring conviction to them. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Now, one more thing before we come to a close. Um, I wish to say if you need prayers from us, please message us, go to our website, um, or even however you want to do it, but get in touch with us and we will pray with you and we will pray for you. If you need us to pray with you at another location, we have people doing this. <coughs> you can Skype me, text me with a time, um, and if you can Skype me, and um, we will come over the Skype, and we will be there at your service, or we will be there um, to be able to pray for people. So if you need a, a, a service, a preacher for a service, I'm, I'm welcome. I'm, I'll come and do it. You have to Skype me um, and give me a time. Um, as long as it doesn't interfere with what our services are here, um, we would we would, we are willing to do that. I've got other preachers as well um, that can do that, but I'm willing to go and um, preach for you. At, whether it's a Bible study, uh, you tell me what to preach on Bible study. We'll pray for people over the internet, and uh, we'll see. We'll put, it's all going to be for salvation. It'll be a pure gospel about Jesus and salvation. It will be praying for the healed, for the sick to be healed. And that's the kind of service, if you wish me to do, I will do over the Skype and uh, we'll do it that way. So please inbox us first. Don't just call me up and expect me to do it because I might be doing other things and I need to pray before all these things happen. So, Father, I thank you now in the name of Jesus for all these people that have been on. Father, if there is people out there that want Bible studies out, out, out and they want to Skype me in on private meetings, Father, I'd do that wherever they are in the world. We'll do that, Lord God. As long as it's for your glory and not for me. As long as you want there, you've got people there, Lord God, that we need to speak to, that you're going to bring into your presence and give salvation and heal, Lord God, I'm willing to do it. If it's not about you, Lord Jesus, I don't want to do it. It's got to be about you. Father, I ask physically, spiritually, and financially that you bless every person on this ministry right now, Lord God. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, where there's salvation needed being for these people's families, where there's hurts, where there's brokenness, where there's loneliness, where there's depression, whatever it is now, Lord God, I ask in the name of Jesus and by the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord God, that you touch these people. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. May God be blessed. May you be blessed. And I'll speak to you again. I say, if you need me, please inbox us. God bless you. Amen. Amen.